starting a new series called The Holy Spirit. I'm very excited about this series. I'm always excited about the various series that we're doing because God's always doing something new, and I just love to be a part of what he's doing. How about you? Uh, yeah, you're convinced me. So anyways, I want to welcome those who are watching online. So grateful to have you with us this morning. And those in Auditorium 2, come on, let's give it up for Auditorium 2. <laughs> Woohoo! Good to have you with us. Before I get in the message, I, I just want to do a couple of plugs here for our 21 days of prayer. We did begin yesterday. We had a great group out here uh, for prayer. We also have a prayer resource if you're looking for that. We have those at the information table. Try to make it out if you can. We have a couple of, of them available at night. This is a season of seeking, of pressing into God, learning more about God, learning how to hear his voice. And we're going to do it together through this 21 days of prayer. We're pretty fired up about this season. And thank you for all of those who did come out yesterday. It is live stream, so if you can't make it, you can live stream at that time and still be a part. So, you know, we have a lot of moms who have babies that don't want to get them out at 6 o'clock in the morning. Very smart. I wouldn't do it. So uh, please be a part of that. Also, we have Growth Track today. The first installment of Growth Track is today after service. And if you're thinking about taking your next steps and becoming a part of our family here, that would be your next step. We'd love to see you there. All right, so before we get into the message, we do our declaration, right? You thought I forgot? I didn't. So uh, for those of you who are visiting, we do this declaration to get our hearts ready to receive. You see, God is always wanting to do something in our lives. He's a giver. He's not a taker. He's a giver. He's gracious, but a lot of times it's, we have a hard time just receiving what he wants to do, and we follow what we say. So say this declaration with me and get our hearts ready to receive. Say, today, today I will hear the voice of God through the word of God. My eyes will be enlightened, and I will be changed. Now turn to your neighbor and say, I will be changed. Like, Really tell them like you mean it. I will be changed. Turn to, turn to another neighbor and say, you will be changed. And let's just thank God for that. All right. So how many of you would say, I'm kind of unsure when it comes to the Holy Spirit. I kind of don't, don't I, I want to know a little bit more about him. I don't know much about him. Anybody here a little bit? Few people. So you all are really schooled in the Holy Spirit. Is that what I'm hearing? You all really, really know him. Like he, you're, he's your best friend. Why are you looking at, you know, this is interactive. You can engage with me, okay? So don't leave me up here by myself, okay? So the Holy Spirit, uh, I chose to use a verse uh, to set up this whole series to show you why it is so important. And it's in Acts chapter 19. And for those of you who are visiting, we have in your uh, worship guide, we have these little notes. In fact, let's all just pull these out because I think you're going to want to take notes today because you're going to learn some new things about the Holy Spirit that you may not have known I'm going to be introducing you to my friend, the Holy Spirit. And uh, if, as you see, it's hole punch so that you can, um, we have, um, if, at the information table, we have little binders that you can actually put them in and keep all of your notes so you can pick one of those up as well uh, for you. And also, I am promoting this incredible book throughout the whole series. We're going to have four weeks on the Holy Spirit. This book is called The God I Never Knew, the best book I've ever read on the Holy Spirit. You know, I met someone out in the lobby after hearing even the message, they said, you know, I'm just, you know, and basically the analytical brilliant minds, brilliant minds, your analytical minds sometimes have a hard time uh, grasping the concept of the Holy Spirit. And I said, just get this book. Start to get to know who he is. So I encourage you, if you're interested to grow and learn more about the Holy Spirit, to me, it's the best book. It's simple. It's simple, and I need things really, really simple. I don't need a lot of big words that I have to go look up in some dictionary somewhere, okay? So it's, this book will be a blessing to you. All right, so this opening verse, it comes from Acts chapter 19. Now, just a little bit about your Bibles. For those of you who may not know, your Bible is in two, it's, it's in two parts. You have your Old Testament and your New Testament. And the very first four books of the Bible, they're called the Gospels. And it basically gives the life of Christ, what he came to do. And I said this in first service, I am so grateful that we have actually some historical record of the actual life of Christ, like what he did, how he lived. Because the scripture says in 1 John 4, as he is, so are we in the earth. So that means I can look at his life in the gospels and say, hey, that's available for me. You're not excited about that. I am. 
Meaning, I can look at the life of Christ and see this is how I'm supposed to live my life. So I'm really grateful for that. Then we have the book of Acts, comes right after the Gospels. And the book of Acts is it's an historical record of the church, of the church's birth and its growth. So in Acts chapter 1 and 2, you hear Jesus talking about the Holy Spirit coming, and then you actually see him coming in chapter 2. Verse or chapter 19 is like decades later. Okay, it's like, although it's just 19 chapters, it's like years and years later. So we're going to pick up in chapter 19, decades later, after the Holy Spirit initially came. So it says, while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. And Ephesus is where we get the book of Ephesians from. There he found some disciples. Did you see that word disciples? It kind of went fast, disciples. So... He found some disciples. So what does that say to you and I? That they were followers of Christ, correct? They had already heard of Jesus and had received him. And he asked them, this is Paul, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They answered, these disciples answered, no, we've not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. And it's sad to say that that is the case today as well. What I mean is this, that many of us may have heard of God the Father, We've heard of God the Holy or God the Son, but this Holy Spirit, we just don't know much about. It's kind of elusive. And I believe that many times people have stayed away from even discovering who he is because of how he's been packaged. There's been some misconceptions about the Holy Spirit because how human experience has packaged him versus what the Word of God says about him. There's a difference. Because I know for me, I had no desire to know who the Holy Spirit was based on what I saw by human experience in people's lives. They were weird. They were strange. They couldn't wear makeup. It was weird. Okay, so, and and I I remember being in a service where uh, someone was talking about it and he was escorted out of the service. So basically, you didn't talk about the Holy Spirit. So, uh, and, and I think, again, it's because of how he's been packaged. But he's, he's not how he's been packaged. We're going to look at the Word of God and see what does God's Word have to say about the Holy Spirit. And I, and I, I thought about this. Okay, I believe the reason why he's been cloaked in a lot of uh, misunderstanding, uh, it's, I think it's this. It's like this. So if, I have an, if, I have an, if, an, if my enemy knew of a weapon that could destroy him, he'd probably do everything in his power to make sure that I didn't get a hold of that weapon. Right? Are you following me? Are you picking up what I'm laying down yet? Okay, so if the, the enemy knows that if I really discover who the Holy Spirit is and what's available through the Holy Spirit, he knows that he's going to be limited in his access to my life. So it's powerful, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So, um, but even the name, if you think about the name Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit, even the word ghost kind of makes you go, hmm, why? I don't like ghosts, right? And, and so I want to first unpack that word. What does it actually mean in the original language? Because 800 times when, it, when the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit is mentioned, it's kind of interesting what the actual interpretation of it is. So if you go to your worship guide, the first in the Old Testament, every time spirit or ghost is mentioned as referring to the Holy Spirit, it's ruach. Can you say, Ruach. turn to your neighbor, just don't spit. <laughs> okay. And what does it mean? Real simple. It just means a wind, a breath, a wind, a breath, a violent exhalation, a blast of breath. Spirit break out, break our walls down, the breath of God. Really, that's what it means, just the breath of God. And then in, and it says here in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the, fa- the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God, the Ruach of God, was hovering over the waters. I can't even say it right. I'm just not Hebrew, okay? So, so it's just, again, a blast, the breath of God. Uh, now in the New Testament, every time Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost is mentioned, it's the word pneuma. Turn to your neighbor and say pneuma. You're learning Greek today because that's Greek, right? I've got some real learners in here. And what does it say in the New Testament? A current of air, a blast of breath, a strong 
breeze. So now, now think about it. God the Father, God the Son, God the breath. Then it makes sense, right? So God the Holy Spirit. Do you see that? Kind of be, it'd be funny to call him the breath. But that's really, it's the breath of God. And look at in John chapter 6, verse 63. It says, the words, this is Jesus. Jesus is saying this. The words that I speak, so every word out of that Bible, right? The words that I speak to you, they're spirit, pneuma, and they are life. That means in every word in your Bible, there is a potential for its fulfillment. There is a potential for every word because it's got life on it. It's got spirit on it. It can change your life. There's potential. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. It's not guaranteed. There's potential because it can either just be a storybook that you read that's historical, or it can be a life-giving breath of God that you believe that changes your life. It's really, it's up to the reader, not up to God. There's potential. Jesus said it has the potential to bring spirit and life change to you. So who is the Holy Spirit? Let's talk a little bit about who he is. First of all, he's not an it. He's not an it. People often refer to the Holy Spirit as an it. He's not. He's a person. He's a person. And you worship God. He's a person. Now, people, you and I, we have a mind, will, and we have emotions. That kind of makes up who a people is. Well, in your worship, God knows, I have some scriptures next to this point here. And those scriptures will take you to where it shows you that the Spirit of God has a mind, a will, an emotion. So you can do that study on your own. So he is a person, not an it. Next, in your worship, God, he's the executive arm of the Trinity. The executive arm of the Trinity. So I heard this example many years ago, and I really like this example. It kind of helped me make sense of the three of these guys. So when the scripture says in Genesis chapter 1, let there be light. So God the Father said, let there be light. Jesus flipped the switch, and the Holy Spirit was the electricity. Isn't that a great example? I, that's, that's free. It wasn't mine. So I got that from someone else. But I love that example to show you the three of them working together. Now think about it. It also says, let us make man in our image. See the us, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. They were all involved in creation. Now I'm not saying that I completely understand their separation in their world. I don't. We get glimpses of it in the Word. I just know that they're equal. All three in one. Holy Spirit is God. Jesus is God. The Father is God. Okay? So, he is the executive arm of the Trinity. He is the manifest presence of God. The manifested presence of God. A lot of times when people say, oh, I, I feel God's presence. That's the manifested presence of God. Not that it's always. A lot of times people will get goosebumps and say, oh, it's God. No, it's your cold. So, but I'm just simply saying that he's the manifested presence. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go along. <clears throat> But the best point is this, he is our greatest friend. He's a person. He's our greatest friend. We need a friend. We need a really great friend. And the scripture really shows the heart of Jesus in talking about the Holy Spirit. Now, now the book, in the book of John, verse, chapter 14, 15, and 16, these three chapters it records a conversation that was happening in the upper room. He has all of his disciples with him. And so it's really important to him. For, for, if you think about all that was written in those chapters, the vast majority is about the Holy Spirit. So it was really important, wasn't it? I mean, come on, guys. I'm about to leave. i got to get this stuff into you because I'm leaving. And he talked about the Holy Spirit. But this verse, mm, it is so delicious. And it says, and I will ask the Father. And he will give you another. I want you to circle that word, another. Another. In the Greek, it's alos, A-L-L-O-S. I will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you. Can anybody in this room use a little help? Just a few of you? Okay. So the Father, so Jesus is saying, you're going to need some help, and I'm going to send you another. Now, this is what's so wonderful about this word, another. When I discovered what this word meant, it just it took a couple of days to meditate on this one. The word another, alos, 
when Jesus said it, this is what his disciples heard. If you break it down in the original Greek, Jesus was saying to his followers, Jesus is saying to you and I, I'm going to send you someone. He's a person. He will do, in my absence, what I would do if I were physically present with you. That's what he was saying to them. And you know how comforting that was to them? Because he, he tells them, hey, by the way, I'm leaving. What? Where are you going? But then he says, wait, 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 wait. I, I, I'm going to send you another. He's going to do in my absence what I would do if I were physically present with you. Now, I was really excited about that, but you don't seem too excited about that. <laughs> I, I think I need to pray. Maybe I need to lay hands on you or something. Now, the word advocate, interesting word, advocate, you get where you kind of, it's actually in the Greek, it's a parakletos, where we, a lot of times we get that terminology lawyer, someone who goes to bat for you. So it also means comforter. Uh, I'm sending you another comforter, a, a counselor, a strengthener. Anybody need some strength? One is going to stand by you. I'm sending you a friend. Now think about it, for those of you who have a really, really close friend, wouldn't you say that a lot of your close friends, they strengthen you? Sometimes you get some counsel from them. Sometimes you just don't know what to do. Sometimes they just, they just stand by you and they hold your hand. They pray for you. They help you when you're going through something, right? In fact, there's a scripture that says that, that he's, a, he's a, a, a friend that sticks closer than a brother. So he's this Friend, and this morning, I have the honor to introduce you to my best friend, the Holy Spirit. And I want him to be your best friend because you desperately need him. If you want to fulfill the purpose of God for your life, if you want to live a life that's extraordinary as God created you to live, Jesus said, I've come to give you an abundant life. If you want to live a mundane life, just forget about the Holy Spirit. But if you want to live an extraordinary life, walking with God and hearing his voice, you need him. You need him. And I think most of us are very hungry to know more of God. And I, in fact, I'll even say that I'm pretty amazed at you all because, you know, whenever we go into a prayer season or something, every resource that we have just goes. It says to me, you're hungry for God. And the Bible says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after God. They shall be filled. So get ready to be filled, to be touched, to be changed through this series. So the Holy Spirit our best friend. So what I want to do this morning is to talk about some characteristics of wind, because some of the characteristics of wind are going to parallel some of the characteristics of the Holy Spirit. You ready to go with me on a journey? Yes. All right. Oh, I got some people that are actually engaged. I'm so excited about this. Okay. The first in your worship guide notes is wind is unseen, right? But you can feel it, right? I mean, your hair definitely can experience it, and your clothes can fly in different directions, right? So you, you, you may feel it, and you can see its effects, but you don't always see it, right? And that's kind of like the Holy Spirit. So the scripture says this, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you to be with you forever. The next part of the verse, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him. They're going to laugh at you. What are you talking about? Something that you can't see. The Spirit of God. Because it neither sees him, nor it knows him. And see, the world, it says, you know, unless I can touch it, and I can wrap my brain, I can understand, I can control it, it's not real. No, 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 no. It's not how the Spirit of God works. But you know him, for he lives with you, and he will be in you. But you can't see him. And I know it's kind of interesting. You're calling him my friend, but I can't see him. Well, that's just how it is. It's spirit. It's spirit. One day you'll we'll see everything face to face, but that's not the dispensation that we're living in right now. This is the dispensation of grace and walking by faith. Walking by faith simply says, if you said it in your word, I believe it. Oh boy, if we can come to that place, our life will be so much easier. Amen. You said it, I believe it, and that settles it like a child, like a child. So the Holy Spirit can be felt. And I am not saying that we should base our full walk with the Lord based on what we feel. Because our feelings change. Yours don't. But you can wake up so excited about life, but a couple hours later you're like so depressed, right? Your feelings. So feelings, they're not leaders, they're indicators. So I believe, and, and we believe here at Life Christian Church, the Holy Spirit can be felt. 
We want to feel them. In fact, one of the prayers that we pray every single Sunday in our intercessory prayer time, we pray that you would have an encounter with the Spirit of God. You have an encounter with God. You experience His overwhelming love that you can't even put words to, but you just know that you need it desperately. And we have people here at, 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 who have come to, to Life Christian Church who maybe they've come from an unchurched background. They don't know Jesus that well, but they start coming and, and experiencing God, and they'll meet me at the door. And I remember this one lady, she, she, she came up to me, and she said, you know, I was here last week, and, and she said, and she literally was pointing to the sanctuary. She said, there's something in there. I don't know what it is, but there's something in there because something happened to me. I said, oh, that's great. So what happened? She goes, I have no desire to swear. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> and she goes, no, 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 let me tell you. I'm the mother of truck drivers. <laughs> she goes, I have no desire. And she had a friend with her who came because she was shocked at what happened to her friend. And then, you know, I've had people just crying at the door. They can't even talk to me. They're just... <laughs> and I'll say, that's, yeah, that's, that's him. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely doing work in you. We have people that come in sick and leave healed. In fact, this morning in our first service, someone had, a, had gotten a report about a tumor. And they literally felt in that place where they were diagnosed, they literally felt like almost like a wand going right into that particular area because the presence of God is here. He's spontaneous, and he begins to do incredible things. And if you just stay open, he'll do amazing things in you even this morning. Even this morning, he can be felt. Next point in your worship guide notes, wind is unpredictable, kind of like women. Yeah, someone said, a big amen! <laughs> All right, so... Where was I? It's un so have you ever noticed that wind shifts, right? And it's really important for those who are working in uh, air traffic controllers. They have to kind of study where the wind is going and coming because to land those big planes, it shifts. It's unpredictable. Wind is unpredictable. God is unpredictable. He does not like to be put into a box. He wants us to follow him, not tell him what to do and how to do it. Whatever I feel comfortable with, this is how you're going to move God. That's not how he is. And if you think about it, God never does the same thing all the time. Never. <laughs> to me, it's kind of, it makes it it's kind of exciting because when I wake up in the morning, I don't know what's going to happen, but I know it's going to be good because he's unpredictable. Even if I'm going to go through a dark time, well, I've gone through many of them, written several books on them. Point is, you can go through a dark time, but you still know it's going to be an incredible journey because he's with you. So he's unpredictable because a lot of times what we'll do is Instead of worshiping God, we'll actually begin to worship the system that got us to God. So think about in the Old Testament, you have Moses. God spoke to Moses out of a burning bush. Can you imagine? So this is what we do as human beings. Well, unless God speaks to me out of a burning bush, God's not speaking. Right? No. So we try to compartmentalize God. No, he's unpredictable. And, and there's this one story in the Bible where this man brought his friend to Jesus. He was blind. His friend was blind. And he had heard about Jesus, and Jesus laid hands on people. And he asked Jesus, come lay hands on my friend. Do that hand thing that you do. And so Jesus doesn't do that. He heard him, but Jesus didn't do that. You know what he did instead? It's kind of crazy. He bends down, and he spits in the dirt. Spits in the dirt. And then he makes this, like, spittle balm with his hands. Think about this. And then he begins to bring it towards the guy's eyes. Can you just imagine his friend? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He's spitting in my friend's eyes, right? <laughs> now he's going to get diseased and died. So he didn't, didn't put his hand on him. He's unpredictable. He doesn't want to put in a box. And that's difficult for a lot of us because we're control freaks. We, just, we want to understand. Listen, if God can fit in your brain, he's way too small. He's way too small. So he's un predictable. Look at this scripture in John chapter 3 verse 8. The wind, that word wind there is pneuma. 
the word for the Holy Spirit. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear it sound, but you cannot tell where it, where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. He's unpredictable. The next one, one of my favorites, wind is powerful. Think about how electricity is generated through wind. Or how about a tornado? Oh, how powerful is a tornado and it could bring such destruction. And Jesus said this scripture in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. That word power is in the Greek, it's dunamai or dunamis. It's where we get the word dynamite. It literally means miraculous power. Is there anybody here that could use a miracle today? Miraculous power. Jesus said it. When it comes on you, it's going to be powerful. Listen, so many times we are settling for human power where we can have supernatural Holy Spirit power to solve situations in our life. Some of you, yes, yeah, some of you are walking through some situations right now. You're walking through some situations right now in your marriage with some rebellious kid and human power is not going to solve it. You need the power of the Holy Spirit. Some of you got a doctor's report and some of you don't know how, but I'll tell you how, not human power, the power of the Holy Spirit. Some of you need the power of the Holy Spirit in your marriage that's hanging on on a shoestring. Power of the Holy Spirit. Wind is powerful. You don't have to settle for human power. You can have supernatural Holy Spirit power. Love that scripture. The last one is this. Wind is refreshing. A lot of times when you're walking from your car into this building, it can be Africa hot, right? And by the time you actually get in into the building, you're like soft and just literally wet. You know, our hair's like this, you know, because it's just so hot, right? Then you, you come into the building and then you feel that refreshing air, right? It's refreshing. Look at this wonderful scripture. So it's in, it's in the amplified. Again, it's kind of wordy, but it really shows what we're trying to say. So repent, change your inner self, your old way of thinking, regret, regret past sins, and return to God, seek his purpose for your life, so that your sins may be wiped away, blotted out, completely erased. Yes, watch this. So that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, restoring you like a cool wind on a hot day. Right? Refreshing. So the Holy Spirit wants to refresh you. Some of you need some wind in your sails. So last Sunday was quite uh, was just such a monumental Sunday for us here at Life Christian Church. Uh, after service, we all headed out to the beach. It's our annual church picnic, and we had our water baptisms, and we ended up water baptizing 46 people. It was amazing, just amazing, of people making that outward, outward commitment of what had happened into their heart. It was just an amazing thing. So in the morning, when I came in, uh, to, as, as we were coming into the church, it was very, very hot. It was Africa hot those mornings. And, it, and you know, if it's going to be hot in the morning, you just know what it's going to be like in the afternoon, right? And so I was thinking coming in, oh my gosh, it's going to be a hot one at the beach today. Uh, hopefully we'll have some tents and stuff like that and waters. And So then after service, we all headed out to the beach. And no, I'm telling you. Verida, that's an Italian word. Someone who's Italian knows what that means. So I'm telling the truth. So literally, we get out to the beach. There's this cool, refreshing breeze. Isn't that true? Wasn't it awesome? Cool, refreshing breeze. And there was this cloud over us. In fact, this breeze was so amazing. Uh, when they were actually baptizing people in the ocean, um, the waves were so high from this wind, they were having like the time... In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, you know, it's hilarious. <laughs> One of our members actually was like being taken away from, with, the, uh, with some of those waves. But I'm, I'm sitting there, I was, I was sitting there going, wait a second, wait a second, it was Africa hot this morning. And this breeze, the whole time, the whole time we were 
started there. And it's amazing. We all started to leave. It left. It rained. Why? Because the Holy Spirit was there. Oh, it was so refreshing. And I pondered this because, you know, the, that cool breeze and that cloud was almost covering the elements from us. Because it still was Africa hot, but we weren't experiencing it because we were being refreshed by the Holy Spirit, by that delicious cool breeze, right? And let me tell you, I, I thought about this many times. We're going through some really, really hot situations horrific situations, and he wants to refresh us in the middle of it all so that although it's around you, although it's happening, you're still being refreshed and sustained by him until it passes. He wants to refresh us. Listen, I want to take you on this journey of discovering this friend, the Holy Spirit. I want you to go on this journey with us because you need to be refreshed. You need to experience God's power. Why go without it? You need to know your friend. So I'm asking you to approach this season, to go on this journey with us, to learn about your friend, the Holy Spirit. Get to know him. Ephesians 4.30, it says this. Don't grieve God. Don't reject him. Don't. Don't break his heart. His Holy Spirit moving and breathing in you is the most intimate part of your life, making you fit for himself, don't take such a gift for granted. Oh, are you hearing the word this morning? Don't take it for granted. And this is what I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you first, in your worship guide notes, let go of misconceptions and fears. Let go. What do I, why am I saying that? Because I, even as I was preparing this, I began to see many of you have, have a perception of the Holy Spirit based on human experience. It's not based on just the Word of God itself. And what I'm asking you to do in this season, approach your Bible, approach God with a blank page. Just with a blank page. I'm telling you, you will discover so many amazing things. You're going to discover what the enemy does not want you to have. You're going to discover what's available for you, and you're going to say, why? Why did I wait so long to find out who he is, to walk with the friend, the Holy Spirit? So let go of those misconceptions and those fears. I want to encourage you next, or actually, let's look at Proverbs 3, 5. It says, trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure everything out. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, that's you. Come on, isn't it true? We just want to figure it all out. No, this, this, this walk with God, it's a walk of faith. It's believing and trusting what he says. I, in fact, I heard the most simplest definition of faith, and it has stuck with me for over 20 years. Faith simply means believing what God's Word says, despite what your senses declare. Believing what God's Word says, despite what your senses declare. Oh, we're so sense-driven, aren't we? We need to be Word-driven. Word-driven. We'll be safe there. We'll walk in that abundant life. So the next fill-in is this. I want to encourage you to go all in. Go all in. Have you noticed that whenever you do something halfway, you really don't get anything out of it? You have to work full-time to get full-time benefits, right? Come on. We understand this. Whenever you do something halfway, does it ever work out? No, you feel good about yourself. Well, I tried. I did something, right? But really, come on. You get nothing when you go halfway. And it's the same thing with God. You're not going to experience what he has for you going a little in. you got to go all in. And, and even when I was preparing this, I began to see this. Some of you, you've got this thought process that, you know, yeah, I, I kind of like that God thing, and I'll do it every, you know, I'll come a couple Sundays. You know, I like the God thing, but I, I kind of like my thing too because I'm just not sure if I go all the way, it's really going to be all that it's cut out to be. All that you're saying, I'm just not sure if it's really going to be the thing for my life. It's really going to fill me. It's really going to, I'm just not so sure. So I'm kind of a, do a little bit of God, a little bit of me, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You won't get anything. And, and when I was thinking about this and praying about this particular thing, I mean, I literally saw this. 
I want to tell you something. I have a message for you if you're thinking like that. You're being played. You are being played by the enemy. Those are his thoughts because he knows that if you go all in, you will change. You'll be a different person. You'll like yourself and you'll like everything that you do. And you'll enjoy the life that God has for you. And you'll find purpose. You'll find all kinds of things out about God that will lure you. And what a journey. What an exciting journey. So all of those thoughts are not from God. They're not. They're right from the pit of hell. You're being played. Go all in. And what do I mean by go all in? We've talked about here about prayer. Get into 21 days of prayer. Try to get that consistent time going. And if you don't know how to do it, get with somebody. We have small group leaders. We have the, we're meeting every morning at 6 o'clock. If you can't make it out or you can just get on live stream and you can learn how to pray. Get into your Bibles every day, every day. Get into your Bibles. But most, more than that, go all in. Get fully connected to the body of Jesus Christ. If Life Christian Church is your church, go all in. Get, in, get on a team. Discover what your gifts are. Start to serve. That's a part of going all in. Get into a small group. Get connected to other believers. Go all in. And, I, and I'm going to give you this challenge, okay? I'm going to give you this challenge. For six months, do it all. Go all in. Everything that we've been talking about, just go all in. Not halfway, all in. If your life does not change, stop. Go to another church. I, I mean this. I, I totally believe that if you fully go all in and get it. See, everything that we do here at Life Christian Church, we don't do it just to do it and to keep you busy. No, we have a reason for everything we do because we understand that you are a body part. And a body part has to be vitally connected to other body parts. If I took my heart out of my chest right now and put it out here, it would die. I would die because it was created to be connected to other body parts. And so you're created to be connected to other people. So you're not going to get the most out of God by just coming and going and not getting involved. You won't. You've got to go all the way in. Become transparent with other people. Become vulnerable to other people because they're going to, guess what? You're going to be in heaven with them anyways. Might as well start now. Go all in. Because you are not going to experience all that he has for you just going a little bit or halfway in. You're being played. All right. Next is this, develop an intimate friendship with the Holy Spirit. An intimate friendship with the Holy Spirit. Now, do friendships just happen? Do they just like kind of happen? Or are you intentional with friendships? If you don't take time to build a friendship, is it going to be built? Wait, this is common sense stuff, right? Right? So if we really are going to develop an, uh, a friendship with him, we're going to have to be intentional. Make a decision, I'm going to develop a, a, a friendship with him. He's not going to be, oh my gosh, spooky, faraway thing that I don't even know what to do with. No, no, no. We're going to remove all of that and say, no, he is a part of the Godhead. He has a role in my life. They all have a role in our life. All right, the next verse is this. I like this verse because you, you see all three of them mentioned in this one verse. It says in uh, 2 Corinthians 13, 14, the amazing grace of the master... Jesus Christ, there's Jesus, the Son. The extravagant love of the Father, God the Father. The intimate friendship of the Holy Spirit. There's God the Holy Spirit. Be with all of you, all three of them, because they all have a role. And this is my fear, that you'll come to know the God the Father, you'll come to know Jesus, but the Holy Spirit. You see, the Father, in your worship guide notes, God the Father he loves me. Oh, it was his love that compelled him to give his very best. He so desperately wanted to shower his love upon you and to be one with you and to be family. He couldn't imagine eternity without you. His love compelled him to give his greatest gift, his son. So, and, and this, even this, this idea of God the Father loves me. Some of you have had such a bad experience with your natural father, and you're taking that bad experience into trying to understand God the Father. Abused, neglected, whatever it is, not present. That's not how God is, the Father. He's not that way. And the enemy has done such a great job at marring who God is in our generation. And that was me. I had a horrible relationship with my dad, and I came to to Christ with this wrong perception of God the Father because of my relationship with my dad, that God had to heal me of that. 
and show himself to me as the father. And, and I experienced a love that you can't put words to. And I'm still growing in my relationship with the father, but I know that he loves me. And he loves you. And he wants to heal some of you of that brokenness that you've experienced with your father. In fact, he's the only one who can. No counselor can heal that. No counselor. Oh, the courage, the confidence that comes from that healing. You can't even put words to. And it's for you today. It's for you today. Let him touch you. God the Son saves me. Oh, Jesus. He divested himself of all of that glory and splendor. He was in heaven. He was the dude, let me tell you. Literally became vulnerable. Human flesh. And I, I'm still blown away that God entrusted Jesus to you and I, like Mary and Joseph and human beings. And why did he do all of that? Because it was the only way for the Father to be able to love us fully. He had to get sin out of the way. It separated him from us. He can't cohabitate with sin. Sin cannot be in heaven. So Jesus, he dealt with it, took our place, removed that barrier. So he, Jesus saves us, but the Holy Spirit is with me. Jesus said, I'm going to send you another. He'll be with you forever. And I love the verse that says, he'll never leave you or forsake you. Never, never. Why? Because he lives in us. And when you receive Jesus, he comes to live on the inside of you. This morning I want to pray. If you've never experienced it, if you've never actually said, Jesus, come into my heart, be my Lord, be my Savior, guess what? He's not in you. Why is it a prayer? Why do you have to ask him? Why doesn't he push himself on you? Because he's a gentleman. He doesn't push himself on anybody. You can't experience his refreshing, his power, all of these wonderful things about him without first receiving him. And it comes with receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And I want everybody to be still for a minute here. I know you all want to do your little notes and click and all that. Let's just, everyone be still. In fact, everyone close your eyes, bow your heads. This morning, maybe your next step is just that. Never, never receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You've never prayed that prayer to allow the Spirit of God to come into your human spirit and make you new, the Word of God says. Make you born anew, a child of the living God. You've heard about God, maybe even went to church, but did you receive Him? Because He will not push Himself on anyone. If that's you this morning, I want to pray with you. And if you want to be included in this prayer, this powerful prayer that's life-changing to receive Jesus, if that's you, with every head bowed, every eye closed, quickly just raise your hand and say, that's me. I want to receive Jesus. I see that hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. I, re I want to receive him. I want to start fresh. I want to surrender my life. I see that hand back there. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Maybe you're here. It's time to rededicate your life. You've been far away from God. You just want to come back. Boy, you need some wind in your sails like desperately. You want to get to know the Holy Spirit. Yeah, maybe you, you knew Jesus as Savior, but you don't know the Holy Spirit. You want to recommit your life. And if that's you, quickly raise your hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. I see that hand back there. Bless you. Bless you. Oh, bless you. God is moving in this place in a powerful way. Now, I'm going to pray this prayer. When I pray this prayer, I want you to repeat it after me. And say it with all of your heart and allow that miracle of God to do that work in your spirit that only he can do. Say, Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I surrender my life completely to you. Be my Lord. And be my Savior. I believe you died on the cross for my sin. I believe that today, upon inviting you in, I am born anew. You live in me. Help me to live for you all the days of my life. Oh, I give you praise, Father. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I, I thank you that even as we, we began to talk about the Holy Spirit, that 
the seed of this word is going so deep in everyone's spirit. That Holy Spirit, you, even throughout this whole week, I thank you that you're going to reveal faces and sides of who you are to every single one of us because we want to know you. We want to know you as our friend and to walk with you and to hear your voice as we've never heard it before. We're so open, Holy Spirit, so open, like children. And, you, and you're so faithful, Father. You said that if we would hunger and thirst, we'd be filled. Have your way in us, Holy Spirit. Show us more and more of who you are in Jesus' name. We're just so hungry, God, so hungry for more of you. And we have such an expectation in this season that even out of this series, we'll know you as we've never known you before. In the name of Jesus, thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on, let's give God some great praise right now. Oh, we just praise you, praise you, praise you. God is so excited for this journey with you. He's just so, so excited. In your worship guide notes, I gave a challenge in there, and it's to read John 14, 15, and 16, Acts chapter 1, 2, 10, and 19. I know that you guys do your soap reading, but I want you for these four weeks, stay in those chapters. You can do your soap as well. You'll be okay. You can get it all in, but just stay saturated in those chapters because the Spirit of God, he, he really wants to reveal things to you that only He can do. Does that sound good? If you prayed that prayer to receive Jesus or to re recommit your life or even you just want to talk to somebody in ministry here, in your worship guide, I talked about that, worship, or that connection card. Just pull that out. And if you mark it, I've committed my life, I've recommitted my life, I just need to talk to somebody. We'll make sure that we get you those resources in the mail and we'll make sure that we contact you this week because we do want to be a blessing to you and help you in your next steps and your growth. Come on, let's give God praise one more time. <laughs> <laughs>